Hi, this is Patricia Greenberg. My guest today is Barb Jordan, and she's the founder of Always Bev, which stands for Always Be Vigilant. Let me tell you a little bit about Barb Jordan and how this came about. She's a three-time All-American, three-time national champion in the sport of softball. So jealous because I can't toss a ball at all. She represented Team USA for seven seasons, winning a gold medal in each of those years and was as an alternate for the 96 Olympic team. She represented Team USA as coach on the junior and women's level, helping lead those teams to gold medals. She's a former broadcaster for ESPN, Fox Sports, and Major League Baseball. Welcome, Barb. Oh, my gosh, Patricia. Thank you so much for having me. And I definitely want you on my team. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me tell you, my personal interest is that, of course, um, we are going to talk about what does a softball player have to do with aging well and taking care of oneself. So we're going to get into that and I'll let uh, Barbara tell you her story. But uh, really, it's basically how you went from being a world class softball player and sports broadcaster to running a personal safety and security training business. Yeah, uh, it's a long story, but in short, uh, we had a family tragedy many years ago. My older sister, Beverly, was murdered by her fiance. And in 2018, he was released from prison. And it was very difficult to, to think that, you know, this normal looking guy is going to be back out on the streets and people don't know the warning signs. And after living through the traumatic event of how this guy basically not only groomed my sister, but groomed our family, you know, told us all the things that he wanted us to know. What I've learned in life is, you know, there are always warning signs before the act of violence. And so I thought to myself, I've got to, I've got to warn people. I have to educate people about what to look for when they're out in society with, you know, normal everyday activities. And when we meet people, you know, what are warning signs? What should we watch for? So that's why I launched Always Bev. So, you know, your, your mission of Always Bev is to empower and educate individuals with skills to stay safe. And I, again, this show, like I said, we like to devote it to all things aging well. It, it, it's relevant at any age, but, you know, now we're living in a world where you really have to be vigilant. Hmm. So tell us about what it is you teach. Uh, it's an array. I, I speak to young girls. I speak to college women. I speak to older women. It's really whoever wants to understand how they can live with more peace in their lives and not be afraid. And so oftentimes, Patricia, people say, how do you talk about safety and not scare people? And the course is really about empowering individuals with just with certain skills. Like I can say, where are you going tonight? And you're like, oh, me and my friends were going out to dinner. And I'm and I would say, see the vigilant thing to do is leave early, leave a few minutes early so you can get a good parking spot. You know, don't leave late. And then the next thing you know, you have a terrible parking spot. You're in a bad position to not only walk in, but when you leave that restaurant, who's going to be with you when you walk back out to your car? So it's a lot of different skills that we can apply to everyday life. Yeah. So it's, it's the everyday routines that we don't think about, or we become complacent because we kind of do it over and over again. Um, so Talk to us about, I, you know, I took notes from your, your page, recognizing signs for unwanted behavior. Mm. Well, that could be in a lot of different categories. Sometimes it can be within a relationship. Sometimes it can be with being approached, possibly at a holiday party, you know, this, this December, you know, what are the warning signs? And I always say, watch out for the person that's too good to be true. Okay. Uh, you know, they push all the things that they want you to know about them. And when you ask some questions, they're just giving you a lot of information. They act like they know a lot about a lot of different things, but they're never answering the question. So you might see that at somebody, uh, you know, that you're talking to at a party. You might see that with a handyman who shows up at your house. You can see it in a lot of different ways, but you really have to listen to what you're asking and what your the answers are that you're getting back tells you right away, like, you know, this guy's just, you know, this is just, this is just a big scam. And do you find there uh, that, so again, it's one of those things where um, somebody's hanging around you. Talk to me a little bit about that, because we've all experienced this, when someone just sort of is 
You know, there's that unspoken lurking, you're, you're lurking, lurking. <laughs> and you're in somebody's personal space. Mm-hmm. You know, people who are very good at that, maybe they don't do that, but, you know, and trusting your intuition is something you talk about. I talk about all the time. So mm-hmm. tell me what we, you know, like maybe walk us through a scenario where that could happen because so, it happens at any age, right? It happens I mean, at any age. So let's uh-huh. say somebody's lurking and you don't know them. Okay. okay. A lot of times as young women, as older women, Women don't make eye contact. And when people say be aware, when I tell you to be aware, the first thing I want you to do is have the body language that says I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. Like I'm in charge of myself and I'm in charge of my surroundings. I'm in charge of my inner circle. And so look people in the eyes. And when you do that to somebody that doesn't fit, they back up. Mm -hmm. They understand that you see them, but as women and, you know, girls, sometimes we get insecure and we don't want to be rude and we look down and, you know, we never make eye contact when we walk by people, but when someone's giving you that bad feeling and you find them lurking or stalking or whatever, don't be afraid to look and turn and make eye contact and simply, you don't have to stare them down, but simply say with your eyes, I see you. And that right there can can keep them at a distance because you're telling them a lot with the way that you, you're watching them. So you're in a store. Mm-hmm. I find myself vulnerable to this at, at any age I've been. And I'm in my 60s and I have to be, t- Barb, I'll tell you, I'm guilty of this too. I feel like I'm in my 60s. Nobody's paying attention to me. Well, I'm looking at you. And if I was a guy, I'd be paying attention to you. Thank you. You're so so sweet. But you know what I'm saying? That feeling that you start to say, well, you know, the the guys are looking at the young girls. They're not paying attention to me. And I was in a supermarket. I'll share the story uh, where I had my bag in the in the little top of the cart there. And I had my bag open, which was stupid, 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 stupid to begin with. But the reason I had is because I had my, I'm very absent-minded with my shopping list. So I keep it in my bag. So I won't lose it if I put it down or drop it in the basket. And I go back and look. So I had it. I leaned, I kid you not, I don't have to tell you, two seconds, leaned over to grab an orange juice and came back and my wallet was gone. And I called the supermarket after, you know, when I discovered it was gone. Right. And I happened to be in a blind spot where the security camera um, was not on me at, you know, at that time. So they couldn't trace anything down. But I remember that was a, that was a very defining moment in my life where I said, A, I'm not going to leave my bag open. B, wherever I go, I'm going to let somebody know where I am. I know that sounds crazy, but I would call my husband and say, I am on my way to the supermarket. I'll be back in about an hour or two. And I tell him which supermarket on which corner I was at. And I got in the habit of doing that. And my daughter and my stepson will say to me, leave me alone, you know? And I just say, just please tell me, you know, just give me a little text or tell me where you're going. Right. Like I said, because you could be targeted at any time, anywhere. Right, um, right. When I go to the gym. I tell my husband at, I'm at the gym. Barb, let me ask you something about this. This is very, very important. We are so afraid of confrontation or somebody uh, road rage, someone getting out of the car and hitting us, or you're in a supermarket and someone's looking at you and you give them the side eye and you're so afraid they're going to come at you. That I think contributes to us not wanting to look or make eye contact. Um, So what you're saying is so profound, but we are so afraid to confront people now. So tell us about that. If you're, if you're uncomfortable, whether it's in a God forbid it's in an alley or you're in a supermarket or you're in the gym or you're at school or whatever. So just making the eye contact and showing some sense of authority really does the trick. Well, let me try to, you said a lot of things. So let me try to, let me try to wrap this up. Yeah. So you, between young women and women, women, your age. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not about how old you are. See predators look for opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's what they look for. And a lot of times younger women, because the, we get smarter as we get older, you know what I mean? You're not yeah. going to fool us as much. We've yeah. been through this before, yeah. you know, we've seen this before. So a lot of times that's why younger girls are targeted or, or fooled, you know, when they go to a bar and they're drinking, you know, they can be charmed and they don't realize yeah. they're having drink after drink, but they look for opportunities. So you're simply at a grocery store, your purse is open. Somebody sees that as an opportunity. It happens to young women. It can happen to, to women, you know, middle age, but Awareness doesn't start when you see somebody 
all of a sudden they catch you by surprise and they're lurking or they're staring. See, awareness starts the minute you get out of your car, the minute you walk into a party, the minute you walk into an office, that's awareness. And when you have that, you have the ability to keep people at a distance. But when you don't have that awareness, when you don't have that body language and the eye contact, eye contact, see, people can start to lurk and get a little bit closer and get a little bit closer. And the next thing, you know, you look up and you're like, oh my God, you know, like I didn't see you. And that, that's where we're vulnerable because now they are, I always say my COVID circle. Now they're like coming into my circle where, and now it's hard to defend yourself. You know, now what are you going to do? Your arms are in here like this. But if your awareness starts the minute you go anywhere and you have it, you just take a minute to scan. Mine's my, I do it so much. Mm -hmm. I, I have very, it's very innate. I, I don't go anywhere without looking. I could be like, I don't know. He had that, 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 and that. I just see things like that. Um, but that's when it starts. And that's how we keep people at a distance. It's like, it's like being followed. It's like being followed, like, do you, do you, do you take the time to look back over your shoulder every once in a while? And again, it's not about being paranoid. It's just, you can feel it. You can feel when somebody's behind you, that's intuition. Yes. Nobody, nobody told you they were behind you, but you got a funny feeling. And when you get that funny feeling, do you open up your shoulders and spin around and see if there's anybody there? But if you don't do it, when your intuition kicks in and you didn't have the, the energy to look back that's when they get close to you and that's when they make their move. So one is the awareness and two is, see, now we can use our voice. Now, when people are approaching us and they're still at a distance, we could in the grocery store, no, 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 I'm good. No, 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 my arms are out. Mm -hmm. My body language is clearly staying, staying back and I'm drawing attention to my scenario and that's what they don't want. So they want you to be quiet. They want you to be vulnerable and they want you to be unaware until they can make their move. Okay. There's so much to ask you about this. So what makes a person vulnerable to attack is not paying attention to their surroundings and you know, how oblivious are pe people? People are very oblivious, right? They're yeah. rushing in to get whatever they need at the store. Or they're mm -hmm. picking up a, a present or they're, you know, meeting people and you just, you grab the first parking, like you say, the parking, you grab the first parking you can, and it's far away or it's in a dark area. And um, it's stunning how brilliant the perpetrators are. Um, <laughs> that um, mean, it's real, very easy. Yeah, see, yeah. and what people don't understand is that, see, they have nothing to do all day, but to sit and wait. Yeah. They wait and they watch. That's why you see people sitting in a car and you're like, oh, that's a weird vibe. It's yes. They've been sitting there for a lot. They're waiting for an opportunity. It might be to see what you left in your car. It might be to see if you left your doors unlocked. It might be to see you, uh, you know, not paying attention, walking back, well, back out of the car and you got your purse in your hand. It could be for a lot of different reasons. It could be to follow you home. You know, it's like, when does your awareness kick in? And yes, most people, one, they don't think these things are going to happen to them. And I'm going to tell you, Patricia, and I'm going to tell everybody out there that it is a falsehood to believe that I live in a nice neighborhood. These sort of things don't happen here. Let me tell you something. Bad things happen everywhere. It, and, and think about it. Why wouldn't a criminal go to a nice neighborhood? Right. There's more money in a nice right. neighborhood. Right. I mean, I'm right. like, do we yeah. have common sense yeah. people? Yeah. 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 That's a very, very good point. And we have a lot of neighborhood watch. Now we have everybody's, yeah. everybody's paying a lot more attention now, right. which you know, is, is a wonderful thing. And, you know, I, I ask these questions because our focus is on aging, um, you know, it, it, and just, in my mind, older people are more of a target because of their perceived weakness. Does that does, does the statistics match up with that? I think that there's different types of vulnerability as we get older. I think for, for as we get older, I think scams go into uh, older people because they're not so caught up on what's going on technology wise. You know, I just heard one today and it says your account has been frozen. If you don't do this right away, we're going to do this. And so many people fall for that, yes. you know? And so when, when you, when somebody gives you, someone threatens you and says, if you don't do this, we're going to do that. Like no business is right, going right. to say that to you. Like what kind of business is it if they're threatening a customer? 
But, you know, the scams are what get older people the most. And so when something doesn't feel right, if someone's saying, hey, if you don't pay this bill right now, we're going to disconnect your water. They're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, the, But call somebody. All we need as we get older is reassurance, and especially like if you have sons and daughters, you know, call them and say, hey, have you heard about this? And they're going to be like, it's a scam. Like, yeah. don't do that. Like, that's a total scam because the younger people like, you know, we're just we're, we're into the media more and we see these different things popping up and the different ways that they target people. You know, something, Barb, in our pre-interview that I didn't cover, but I want to throw this out to you is being alone. Hmm. Now, I'm of the thought, the older I get, the more I tell people, even if, you know, you lose a spouse or you get divorced or you find yourself for whatever reason alone at an older age, you know, at a younger age, people are thrilled to have their own apartment and whatever. I'm really big on roommating or check, you know, keeping an eye out on each other that somebody alone should not be living in this very remote area with nobody around. I mean, you know, you're asking for it. I mean, that's a, like a, nobody's asking for it, but I'm saying to put yourself in that position and just is, is to always be surrounded by other people. So um, what is, uh, what is good for a person who lives alone or spend times alone to have on them a, a bracelet, a name tag, what's, what's the mm. most effective um, thing for people to, to have on them in case something does happen. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to say is their safety in numbers. Yes. So, and, and so you can't have somebody live with you. Well, if a handyman comes over, you can have somebody come over. Okay. So you, you know what I mean? So safety yeah. in numbers, people yes. are always going to attack somebody when they're alone. Yes. Not yes. so much in twos and threes. Uh, something that we can have. Now there's, I don't want to slam people's safety things, you know, but there's like these personal alarms. And so right. I, I heard about this one. Yes. And I'm yeah. like, let me try this personal alarm. A little siren goes off. And I was like, I went outside and I was like, oh my God, like this, this is not going to keep me safe, you know, like, and so many women specifically have it, but it's really not that loud, but it's something. Okay. And I always say you should have something instead of nothing, but there's many things that we can use as tools. I'm a fan of pepper gel, not pepper spray okay. because pepper gel goes out in a stream and it shoots about 10 feet where pepper spray goes out like this. And if you live in California, excuse me, California or one of those windy places like Santa Ana winds, you spray that it's going to come right back at you, okay. you as well. Okay. Um, there's, there's coupons, you know, you, if you didn't have anything in your home, you could grab a number two pencil. And if you could just stab them in the eye, you could just fight for a second and understand right. Right. that, that what, what do you have when you have your voice screaming will always benefit. If you're out, if you're, if you're not in a house, but if you're outside in your backyard or in your garage, if you can scream, no, 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 and draw attention, that in itself could make somebody run away. See, that's why they say, don't scream or I'll shoot. Don't do, yeah. don't scream. Don't, scream. Yeah. they don't yeah. want you. They don't want the attention. So we all always have our voice okay. and we really need to, to understand how important our voice can be just like in the grocery store. No, no, I'm good. Thank you. Like somebody asked you, no, no but mm -hmm. don't let them come up to this point. Then your voice is kind of not as strong at that point. Um, there's, there's a, but there's a lot of different things. If you think about it, you're in your garage and somebody walks up, what do you got? How about a can of wasp spray? Right. How about that? How about a fire extinguisher? How about you pull the pin and you just start spraying somebody? Somebody comes up to the gas station. How about you take the pump and you just start spraying the person who's, who's threatening you. And, and those are the things like, see, if you don't know these things ahead of time, you're probably not going to think about it. And excuse me. And that's why my class is, is so informative because I say these things and all someone has to do is tell you that once, you know, I tell you about wasp spray once you already knew about it. I could tell that by just by your reaction, but you tell somebody that once they're always going to remember it. And that's why just taking some sort of safety class in today's world could do wonders for you. That's why it's empowering. That's why it's not scary because there's so many different things that we can do to stay safe and stay ahead of these people that try to target us. How about a whistle around your neck? My, my I, I'm, I'm a former long distance yeah. runner and I would go do these trail runs yeah. and whatever. And my father gave me a, a whistle. He said, just take it with you wherever you go. And I do. I don't yeah. run alone anymore. I've learned, <laughs> I've grown out of that at this age for sure. But um you know, some, again, something on you to bring attention is wonderful. Um, Barb, what about 
antagonizing a perpetrator would would you know is running away better is fighting fighting them off what what is that what's what's the better course of action if you're caught off guard well no scenario is ever the same so it's like me saying like this is what you should do if somebody right. pulls okay. a gun on you like no scenario is ever the same but i want to say this if you have the opportunity to run run but run to where there's people like don't run into the woods, right? You know, don't run down, but people don't know, like you'd be surprised. You run out of fear. So you don't run out of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so always go to where there's people you're walking the streets in New York and somebody's following you. What should you do? Or they're antagonizing you, you know, don't turn down another street, go into a business. Mm -hmm. Like, so one, if you have the chance to go to where there's people or to run or to walk, whatever it is you can do, do that. I think it's so important that you know that it's, if you have to fight, understand where people are vulnerable. I could say to you, Patricia, you could get away if somebody grabbed you by the wrist. You could if you knew that their eyes, their nose, their throat, and their groin were vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And if you knew like you were fighting and you could just throw an elbow right into their nose for that one minute where they go like this, yeah. you can run. Like that's your moment. Right. And yeah, are they some of them, some of them going to get mad and chase after you? Maybe. But now you have separation. And anytime you're under attack and you get that separation, you have you have a better chance of being safe. It's when they grab you and they can do anything with you and you don't know what to do. That's where you're that's where you're in trouble. Let's talk about increasing our awareness, what's going on around us when somebody doesn't when you, there doesn't seem to be a threat. Right. There's um, again not at the risk of scaring people. That's not what we're trying to do is to just be aware. So how do we recognize concerning behavior with someone you don't know? Mm, great question. Great question. So our intuition is so important. And so oftentimes, if we listen to it, we can stay safe. Like somebody said to me recently, you know, everyone was telling me at a party how great this guy was, how great this guy was. And I thought to myself, there's no way I'm letting that guy go off with my kids. There's no way in the world. Like, I don't know what it was. And so, see, that's intuition. Yes. Intuition doesn't need a definition. A lot of times, like as women, we'll go over to like one of our guy friends and we'll say, hey, that guy over there gave me a bad feeling. And they'll say, what'd they do? What'd they say? You know, yeah. give us something concrete. Yeah. 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 And we say nothing. He just right. gave me a bad right. feeling mm -hmm. and they dismiss it. Mm -hmm. Or somebody might say, oh, I know him. He's really funny. Or I know him. He's a nice guy. See, if that's all we know about people, we don't know them and we don't know what they're capable of. So our intuition, when you're not sure about somebody, just trust your intuition. Your intuition will keep you safe 100% because it doesn't talk to us every day. Right. It only talks to us when you need to know something. And if we can learn to listen to it all the time, when it does speak, we can stay safe and you'll be able to differentiate between good and bad. It's like, it's like seeing a child, imagine a child. So you're not threatened, right? Imagine like a, a four-year-old and, and, and you're like, oh my God, there's, they're this, they're that you're not threatened at all. But have you ever seen a kid, a, ba a bad four-year-old? You're like, ah, oh, not that they're going to harm you, but you're like, that's, that child has some problems. You can yeah, tell mm -hmm, the difference. Mm -hmm, and yeah, it's the same thing as an adult. Like if you really watch people, you can see, you can see, and you can tell that they're not, I always say, it's not about not trusting any, everybody. It's about not letting people into your inner circle that you don't know. Don't be so accepting to let people get close to you because in today's world, like you, you don't know people until you, until you get to know people. You said something so profound that you'll grab a guy friend and say, um, you know, well, what did he say? What did he do? Uh, we're told often we're overreacting to someone and, and in your, you know, horrific experience, a, a family member or a family friend or a relative can feel threatening and people are told to dismiss that feeling. And um, so we have to really, really work at telling people to trust their instincts and put their foot down, even if they're underage, to say to their parents or the people taking care of themselves, I don't feel comfortable. Or an elderly person who is being taken care of by others saying, I don't trust that person. That's right. Please That's just right. respect that. Yeah. Um, and you, and that, you don't yeah. need to explain it. It's right. a feeling. Right. And, and guess what? Your no should be honored. Absolutely. And if nobody else is going to honor your no, you are. 
And, and like my mom, boy, my mom, she gives a no and there's no change in her mind, you know? And she's like, I said, no. And that's the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And if more people would be confident that when they say no, they stick to it because anybody that tries to change your mind, when you say no, you're giving them power if you do. And people need to understand that, whether it's a scam, whether it's, you know, somebody who wants to give you a ride and you're like, no, thanks. And you change your mind. You just gave them power to get close to you. That's why sticking to your no is so important. I don't know if you've heard this before, Barb, but uh, no is a complete sentence. Yes, it is. That expression. Yes. Now, I, I want to talk about, because um, I love talking about intuition. I swear by it. Oh, my God. You, let's let's yeah. go to lunch. I mean, we'll talk about it all day. <laughs> what are the subtle signs that your body's giving off about mm. intuition? So, you know, because a uh, lot of people ignore that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Uh, so it, it varies a little bit. Like for men, not that this can't happen for women, but for men, like the hair on the back of their neck goes up, the hair on their arms go up, but that could happen to a woman as well. But women, a lot of the times we feel it in our guts. We, we just feel this little like, ah, uh, or, you know, you just, it's just like this, uh, it's just like this thing that comes over you and you're just like, no, like you just, mm-hmm. it's just a feeling but a lot of times for women, we feel it in our stomachs the most. Right. And when, yeah, and when it, when it kicks in, it's, it's knocking, it's saying, Hey, be aware right here, you know, be aware. And interestingly enough, it doesn't always present as fear. Sometimes it just presents as a little doubt. And then there's a tendency to doubt yourself. Hmm. Maybe I'm overreacting or maybe I'm tired today or maybe, right. This is yeah. Well, that, yeah. Know, and I do want to address that. So anybody yeah. that says, look, I'd rather overreact I'd mm-hmm. rather second guess somebody and be wrong than to not and be dead. Right. Right. I mean, right. no. I mean, just think about that. Like how many times has somebody opened the door for somebody when they knew they shouldn't have and their life ended or it was a violent attack? How many times has that happened? It, it happens and they know better and they knew they shouldn't have done it, but they didn't honor their no. They didn't honor that feeling of intuition and they opened up the door and a violent attack takes place. And that's how, that's how quickly it happens. You know, I, I want to tell you this about um, intuition that when I was, when I was in college, when my sister was killed and it was four days after Thanksgiving and I was down on the, it was a weeknight, Tuesday night. And I was down on the gym floor with my sorority running around. My college roommate came down on the floor and she spun me around and she said, you have to go home right away. Something's happened to one of your sisters. And I stopped and I said these words, one of my sisters is dead. I know it. Nobody told me my sister was dead. Oh All they said was that I had to go home right away. And then on the way home, I said to my boyfriend at the time, I go, something, something really bad has happened. I know it. And I knew one of them was dead. And I just, I never thought when I got to the front door that my dad would say your sister was murdered today. I was thinking, you know, bike accident, mm-hmm. you know, jogging, car accident. I never ever thought that. But when Rich killed my sister, not no one in my family, there were six of us left. Nobody ever said these words. I can't believe that Rich killed Bev, which tells you there were warning signs. And of course it was like the movie Sixth Sense, all the warning signs. I mean, just recall of all the weird, you want to know what intuition is when you go, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That's not right. That's did you see, did you, that's not right. When you do that stuff, oh, that's suspicious. That's your intuition. And so many times that happened with our family and him, but we just were celebrating, you know, that they were going to get married and we looked past those signs, unfortunately. Can you, do you mind sharing some of those? It doesn't even have to be each individual one, but sort of the scenario of what a person does use the word grooming. It's a very interesting word that, that he actually Mm. manipulated the whole family. Yeah. The biggest thing he did with my sister, Bev, who was a very strong woman, by the way, you know, very self-confident. Unfortunately, she was so self-confident. She tried to handle it herself instead of going to people. And that's, he fooled her one last time to take her to an isolated road. But what he did with Bev was he isolated her. Mm -hmm. He never went out with her and all of her friends. If she wanted to do something like that, she, she, you know, it was basically, she could pick one friend, you know, he would just interact one at a time because he couldn't handle the whole scene. 
but he could, he could try to dominate, you know, just a one-on-one situation. So he really isolated her and isolation is one of the biggest red flags for anybody in a relationship. Okay. That's, that's good to know. And said, that's again, that whole concept of that taking you away from the life, you know, that's safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the people that are going to watch out for you and the people that are going to speak up for you, it's, it's doing all of those things and it disempowers you if you do it long enough, you know, the next thing, you know, it's been a year now, not that this happened with my sister, the next thing, you know, they turn you against your family and your friends, you know, and they start saying things like, oh, they always treat me bad or, you know, and they start getting you to try to look at the situation from their eyes, which is not accurate. No, it's, it's very frightening. And we unfortunately can see it from the outside looking in the person and it can't always see it. Right. So that's another thing is, you know, for those of you listening, if you're seeing something going on in somebody else's life, bring it to their attention or someone's attention mm-hmm. um, so it can be addressed. Barb, let's do a rundown of the safety tips that you recommend. Yeah. Um, okay. So these, uh, safety yeah, and yeah, numbers yeah. like you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. We're going to mm-hmm. just touch on some of the things. So when people okay. say, you'll hear it on the news now, be aware. Like, and the first thing I want to say to you is, yeah, be aware. But what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means have, have good body language, which means, you know, your head is not in your phone. You know what I mean? Be aware of your surroundings. Look. And when you pass people, when you interact with people, look them in the eyes. And again, it's not a stare down, but you'll, you'll feel it in your stomach. If somebody gives you a bad feeling, when you look them in the eyes, they're a no, they're 100% a no. You're, I'm not exchanging any information with you. In fact, we're done and I'm going to get remove myself from this situation. Safety in numbers is huge. When you have the when you have the ability to take somebody with you, whether it's a target run or you're going to go grab a coffee, take somebody with you because mm-hmm. chances are they're looking for people that are alone. A lot of the times it's that. Uh, report suspicious activity. People don't do this enough. They do not report suspicious activity. What does that mean? It means you walk outside of your house, right? Whether you're backing out of your garage or you walk out your front door, we know what the scenario looks like. Mm-hmm. So when there's a car there and somebody's sitting in it and they, they're they not there ever before, do you just go about your day? Do you just go in your car and drive away? Because that's when people get robbed. You know, maybe not that day, but, you know, they could be there just watching the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Do you go back inside? One, do you lob, make sure everything's locked up? And then do you text the neighbor and say, hey, you know, there's this truck outside. Do you know whose truck that is? See, that's awareness. That's spreading awareness. And then they look outside and they go, no, I don't know who that is. And then they call somebody and be like, I don't know. We're not. Ha-. And the next thing, you know, you call the police and you say, hey, can you give us a drive by in our neighborhood? We got this, this guy just sitting in his car doing nothing. You know, we don't feel safe. So that that's what you do. And I do want to say this, that if you ever are concerned for your safety, you can call where, depending on where you live, how busy they are. You can call and have cops come by your neighborhood and do drive bys. I you appreciate say- that because I think people say that, well, I'm not going to tax the 911 system. I'm not going to call the police mm-hmm. department. You have every right to call. I always say that if you yeah, think- call your local police yes. department, you don't yeah. have to call 911, but okay. call them and say, mm-hmm. you know, we've had some suspicious activity mm-hmm. in our neighborhoods. Is it possible to get a drive by every night? They're, they're not going to come at the same time, but that's okay. Yeah. But you want it, you want it to look like there's a presence with the police in your area. So there's just all those little things, you know, we can do to be safe. And it's whenever you're vulnerable, whether it's, you know, walking to your car, you know, keep your hands free, mm-hmm. you know, don't as a woman, yeah, specifically we, a we have everything. Woman, yeah. A million things don't going grab on. All yeah. 12 grocery sacks <laughs> and walk out. You yeah. can't defend yourself yeah. and they're going to take your purse. Yeah. That's what they're watching for. Or you're at the grocery store and they say, would you like help to your car? And as a woman, we're like, no, we've got this. Duh. Yeah. We can let them walk you out. I used to yeah. always be like, no, I don't look at me. I don't need your help. And now I'm like, come on, walk with me. Like, because the chances are, I'm going to stay more safe that way. Yeah. It's, it's an excellent, excellent piece of advice for sure. Um, so, you know, talking about uh, one of the things that you mentioned of reporting the behavior, confide in family and friends, um, that is something that the buddy system, right, is always having someone around. Talk about going out at night 
-hmm. I am always telling my daughter, you know, nothing good comes from being out past 11 o'clock at night. What are you doing out at night? She's like, well, all the kids are meeting at the library and we're doing our homework together. So I'm like, okay, you know, call me when you leave, call me when you arrive. But you know, those in-betweens, um, mm -hmm. it, campus safety on college, right? It's a big thing. Talk to me about the difference between in a house and an apartment, because older adults, a lot of seniors live in complexes. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, whether it's a mistaken belief, um, that you're safer in an apartment building. I think to some degree, you, you probably are than a freestanding home. But what are the, some of the things that person should look for in an apartment building? Yeah, I think in an apartment building, I think the chances of the, the entryway being left open are great. Okay. You you know that you can lock the gate, but mm -hmm. you can't you can't count on Take everybody, everybody else, else to right, lock the gate. Right. Or somebody to recently, you know, a young woman in New York lived in a an apartment with a glass door and she walked in at 10 30 at night and guy knocks on the window and he's like, Hey, let me in. She let him in. He rode the elevator upstairs with her, took her to the rooftop and ended her life. Boom. God. Just like that. Just like that, because she was being nice, because she was being nice. And so, you know, we, it has to start with us, but again, see, we can't count on what others are going to do in an apartment complex. You know, if there's a secured gate, the gate should always be locked. And so oftentimes, you know, somebody doesn't lock it or specifically in college, they leave it cracked for a friend, Yes. you know? And, and so, so many different, if, 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 and, and I like, I, I like to walk and whenever I walk, I, I look at people's stuff and maybe somebody didn't shut the front door all the way, or the, the back gate is open, or I'll see a window open with no screen. And I'm, and I'm like, see, if I'm seeing that and I'm just on a walk, the predators are seeing it too. And that's, that's just it. That's what people don't realize. So living in an apartment, you know, you, you got to do everything you can. So you are locked up and not open your door. When someone knocks on your door and you don't know who it is. Don't open the door because we just said anybody can come in if that main door is not, you know, being locked. Don't don't open your front door in today's world. There's no reason to. You can have a conversation right through it. Even if somebody lost a dog, write down your phone number. And if I see it, I'll call you. But I, I can't. I'm not, I, you know. And uh, you also mentioned, I love this, stand firm. You know, we're saying no. Your answer is no. I, you know, it, it's, I, I love what you said about just exhibiting strength and, and that predators are looking upon somebody who's weak or turns away. You might be rushed with fear, but the best thing to do is hold your head up and actually show some semblance mm -hmm. of fighting back. If you yeah. Can. Yeah. During my class, one of the things that I do at the end of it is I make everybody walk across the room one at a time to show us their, their, their walk. Yeah. And, and I, most of the women are like, Oh God, Oh, I'm so un And I laugh and I, I tease them. And I say, if this is what your life at like in a safe environment, what are you like in a vulnerable situation, walking to your car at night or walking across campus and what they, and then everybody gets it, you know, and the next thing you know, they're strutting and they're having fun with it. But it's about that body language. They're not looking for the person who's confident. They're looking for the person who's meek, who's unaware. They're checking an email. They're sending a text, you know, things like that. Um, I do want to say one thing about specifically like being in college, mm -hmm. you know, waiting for a ride, waiting for someone to pick you up and they're going to wait outside because, you know, you want to do everything outside. Stand with your back to a wall. Don't, don't, don't wait out in the middle of the sidewalk because you don't know who's behind you. See, it's like getting gas. You stand with your back to the gas pump. Okay. See, no one's coming through the gas pump. And it's the same thing when you're, when you stand with your back against the wall. Now I only have to scan this, this area. Nobody's coming through the wall. And so that's a great way to have great awareness of your surroundings. Okay. I can't emphasize that enough, especially for an older person, because I, now I'm learning from you because I put the pump in the gas and then I get back in my car. That's okay. If you lock your doors. Okay. If you lock your doors and you don't stare down at your phone the whole right, time. Right. You know, right. and I know you're going to look at your phone. It's human nature in Absolutely. today's world. Everybody's but this is the, this phone. is the key. When you get back into your car, you lock your doors. Okay. And you look in the rear view mirror and you look in the side mirrors and you just, you know, if you look down and you see something or whatever, you, you keep looking. Right. And you're going to see how many people are walking by. It's free. It's creepy. How many people walk by your car and they're like, mm. 
<laughs> but yeah. it really is creepy. But it, it, but having that awareness, like I've been in my car before pumping gas and I see a man, you know, he looked kind of homeless walking towards me. He's and, and and I'm like, oh, God, this is, you know, this is no good. But but see, I caught him when he's still like 20 feet away. That's awareness. Right. And as he keeps walking towards me, I just I just I'm, I'm like this. And I'm like, you know, here he comes. And I look at him and I go. Mm -hmm. We're not doing this. And I just, you know, gave him a this and he stopped and he like went across to the they don't want aware. They don't. Right. And, 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 you know, it's not a, it's not a hundred percent type thing. You know, what's my next thing? Oh, I'm going to lean on the horn. I'm going to make noise. You know, I'm going to drive away, whatever it is. But when you can keep people at a distance and say no, at that point, it changes their whole game. I'd imagine that holds true. If you're entering the supermarket and there's someone yep. standing outside collecting or asking for money or yep. sitting down saying, could you give me a dollar for it? Once you approach that person, you got, you know, you're getting too close to them. So this is all yeah. wonderful. Right. Oh, Barb, this is just amazing. So much wonderful information. I want to thank you so much um, you know, for being here. And I ask all my guests, what do you like about getting older? Uh, what do I like about getting older? I think we're getting smarter. <laughs> I think we're getting smarter. You know, um, we've just been around the block. And I think like we have more confidence as in people. I think when we're younger, we maybe we just like a certain type of personality. But I think as I get older, I I, I think I I'm interested in just a diverse uh, amount of people and different personalities. And when I was younger, it was like, oh, I, I just can connect with athletes, but I can connect with all sorts of people now. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. It's a wonderful skill to have. So we can learn about your classes and seminars at alwaysbev, www.alwaysbevbev.com. And of course, you can go to my website for that information. Thank you again, Barbara Jordan, for joining me today to get your message out to keep other people safe. And thank you all for listening to the show and for more engaging discussions on all things aging well, you can subscribe to my new YouTube channel, Patricia Greenberg, or you can contact me at www.patriciagreenberg.com. Thanks again, Barb. Thank you, Patricia.